Hello everyone, today it's Thursday, April 21st, 2022, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I don't know why I make it so hard to find a show. <laughs> I got this new little notebook thing, and uh, my to-do list is in here, but it, it stays open with my trading book all day long. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. And uh, I absolutely love it. I should um, get a referral link for that. <laughs> But it does have some limitations. Anyway, thank you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate that. So what are we talk about? Well, current market conditions, I'll have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, obviously. And ideally, keep the questions related to the slides. When we get to the live charts, you can ask anything you want. Also, when we do get to the live charts, I want to go through a couple of things and stock charts ACP real quick. And then... Uh, I want to take a look at crypto, obviously, and then we'll pop out into the overall market. If there's a crypto pair you want me to look at, just put a dollar sign in front of it, front of it so I don't get it confused with stocks. So today I want to talk about what stands between you and your success. And it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. And the thing is, I don't want to come across holier than now because, and I put out a tweet today, somebody said something about having some issues and being disciplined and all. And a couple things, discipline gets used up. And the other thing is, no matter how long you've been at this, if you're not careful, it's kind of a slippery slope. You can end up over trading and day trading too much and, and a bunch of other things. And I'll get to that. But I want to talk about one of the main things that stands between you and your success, especially when you're newer to trading. I want to touch upon the fact that at how a little discretion goes a long ways in the trading service. People say, hey, what are the results? It's like, well, I don't actually share results for, for a variety of reasons, and one of them is because a little discretion goes a long ways. By the way, I have a fact page on the trading service if you want to take a look at that. In the archives, you can take a look at it, www.davelander.com slash archives. By the way, if you want to register for this show, even if the date is old, go to davelander.com slash webinar, and maybe you should just take the, the date out of that, I guess. And you'll be registered for all the shows. And even as I add shows, you'll still have access. These are done right now as of April 21st, 2022, on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or, as I often sum it up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, so one question that I get asked quite a lot is how long does it take to become a, su a successful trader? Well, let's back things up a little bit. And the great thing about becoming a doctor, a lawyer, or automatic transmission mechanic, and by the way, I don't want to make it sound like those things are easy to become. The point I'm trying to make, like a plumber and certain other skills, is there is a career path and the career path is laid out you you go to school you pass some tests you become a journeyman depends on what uh you're aiming to be but a journeyman is a plumber and so on and so forth so to become an automatic transmission mechanic probably take about three years and somebody laughed once in a, in a presentation when i said oh an automatic transmission mechanic and and no, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with anybody who could do anything with their hands nowadays. And um, I stay pretty busy on weekends because I seem to be surrounded by a lot of non-handy people. I had uh, put together a car last weekend, a little uh, battery-operated car. And, you know, wife with her helpful suggestions. You know, it was Friday night. I'm taking the edge off a little bit. Dave, maybe you should have started that before you drank your third beer. It's like, Arr. <laughs> but anyway, about three years to become an automatic transmission mechanic. You work really hard. You could probably become a lawyer in somewhere about seven years. And if you try to do both of those things serially, do one and then do the other, it would probably take 10 years at least, right? Well, if you try to become an automatic transmission mechanic and a lawyer at the same time, I would imagine it would take you twice as long, if at all possible i was thinking as we're going live i forget how many hours there are in a week uh let's see seven times 24. yes there's only there's only 168 hours 
in a week. So if you think about that, that sounds too little. Yeah, if you think about that, you sleep, if you're lucky, you'll sleep 50 of those hours. If I can get seven hours a night, I'm, I'm, I'm not golden. I need more sleep than that, really, I really do. But that's about all that my schedule will allow. And then let's say you have a little bit of R&R &R and just, uh, I think it's it takes four or five hours of maintenance on the human body, which is kind of scary. If you think about eating and food prep, and and like I said, you do have a little R&R uh, &R somewhere in between, you don't have that many hours left. I bet you, I bet if you add it all up, you probably don't have 100 hours a week to do something. And, and especially if you're working to become an automatic transmission mechanic and a lawyer at the same time, I think the mental stress would be, it'd be virtually impossible. Now, doctor, 10, 11 years, okay. A doctor plus lawyer, serially, if you're a lawyer, become a doctor, 17 years if you add those two together. Maybe a little bit less because a couple of years of prereqs probably early on would kind of fill in the gap a little bit. But for the most part, it would take you a long time. But if you try to become both of those at the same time, I would imagine it would take you twice as long if it would be possible at all. And I can't imagine how it would be possible. Now, let's say you're a trader and you start trading stocks and you decide that you're going to be a day trader. That would probably take you about three years if you worked really hard to become proficient and successful at it, provided that you wanted it. And I'm gonna get to that in just one second. Now let's say you wanted to become a position trader and you wanted to be a trend follower, maybe use a hybrid approach, something like mine. So again, about three years. Breakout player, probably about three years. I think that'd be a horrible way to trade. <laughs> But it would it could probably be done if you had a, the really, really good mindset about it. And just any other type of trader, let's say you wanted to use classical technical analysis, maybe three years for that. But let's say you wanted to trade, also want to trade options, and then you want to trade e-minis, and then cryptocurrencies, and you were going to do some volatility, maybe some VIX trading. You tried to do all of those things and all these different styles. Well, your length to success, especially if you're system surfing in the meantime, trying this system this week, this system another week or whatever, then you're going to end up with a curve to success that looks something like this. And you may never reach success and one of the things that motivated me to talk a little bit about this tonight in addition to some facebook posts that i've been looking at is i received an email from somebody that said they followed me for a while and they liked what i was doing and they went off and did their own thing and now it's 15 years they've been at this and they said that they've been watching some of my youtubes lately by the way subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash C, as in Charlie, slash Dave Landry, all one word. And I was flattered that he did this, and, and it sounded like he was really, really ready to get serious. And it was about a three or four page email. And so I said, okay, here's your plan. Now, there were a few things that did cost money in the plan. I suggested that he be part of a support group. As I've said a thousand times, my wife Marcy has told me that the Facebook group is the best thing that I've ever done. And it really is. And it helps me personally. I get a little out of it. I get to occasionally get a setup or two or makes me look at a sector or two or think about things differently or justify what I'm doing and why. And just a bunch of a bunch of other stuff. I picked up some code a while back for trading view for the Landry Light Indicator and just a bunch of little ancillary things I never dreamed would happen. But I think the great thing is we're it's a very lonely sport and trading can be really, 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 really lonely. And I think seeing other people's trials and tribulations can help, especially if, hey, I like this setup. This is what I'm gonna do. And this is what I did and it worked or it did not work. So it can help to feel, make you feel normal. So anyway, long story endless, I told this gentleman, hey, look, 
here's your game plan. And I laid out a game plan. And I'll be happy to share that with you guys. I'll, I'll throw it in the Facebook. It basically just said, become a gold member of DaveLander.com or even better, become a member of the trading service, which includes the gold membership. Go through all the courses and then make sure you're participating and paying attention to what's going on in the Facebook group. Because I think the Facebook group is kind of the glue that, that pulls it all together. For instance, if I recommend something in a trading service, I'll chime in and talk a little bit about it in Facebook and say, okay, we're nearing a profit target. Let's keep an eye on this thing. And that's where the discretion comes in a little bit. And you guys will chime in with some things and, and it kind of helps to actually see it work. And you, and you guys are like, hey, I got profits on that. Oh, I missed it. I didn't take it because of this or, or that. Or why didn't you take it? And it's kind of fun. I know you want to party with me, but it's fun to see it all play out in the real world as opposed to some sort of hypothetical situation so anyway good stuff there but i never heard back from this gentleman so i spent you know i, I spent a page and a half or whatever answering him back gave him a game plan never heard back so maybe he's not ready and that's the other thing too is maybe you're not ready and i was looking at some posts you know, i was looking for certain posts earlier today which i was going to repost and, and i noticed going back to like old posts from 2021 and facebook and it was like i'm going to do this from now on i'm going to be disciplined i'm going to do this and i'm not going to I'm not going to chase all these different methodologies. I'm going to focus on one thing, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then a few months later or a year later, as it is now, it's like I'm seeing a lot of that bad behavior resurface. So the, the, the bottom line is you have to really want it, and you have to be willing to, to focus on one thing. And one thing that I wanted to add but I didn't have time to put it in last minute and maybe next week I'll, I'll put it in. And it was Michael Saylor's Twitter picture. Okay. And he's got these lasers coming out of his eyes. And, and I was listening to an interview with him, a big fan of Michael Saylor. Only well, Michael Saylor is by the time you, about halfway through an interview, you stop to buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> he, he gets you all pumped up on it. But the reason he said he has lasers in his eyes is that he believes in a laser focus. And I was thinking about this meme recently, and you've seen this a thousand times on the internet, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to put it to trading. Why am I not successful at trading? And then of course, he does this, and then <laughs> he's not doing so well, right? Well, if you look at that stick, and there's there's probably a thousand more of these. I'm day trading when I should should be position trading. And by the way, you know, you know the point I'm trying to make, and hopefully this meme, hopefully it comes across, is you know you shouldn't be doing these things, but you do them anyway. Now, am I occasionally guilty of some of this bad behavior? Yes. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. <laughs> But I'm trying not to screw up in a big way. And today I had, on an intraday basis, I don't have it handy, but I had like six winners and I had one or two small losses. I did have one somewhat bigger loss, but luckily it got away from me. It's something I, I got the alert that, hey, I need to get out of this. I was having breakfast. I'm like, oh, I'll check it when I get in the office. And then I got busy doing other things. So I did make a mistake and I'm not perfect at this. And that's the thing. It's hard. It's hard to get it right. It's But it's not as hard as many try to make it. And the bottom line is, you know what you're doing wrong. Day trading when it should be position trading. And the example I gave a thousand times there, and let me see if I can Reader's Digest it because I know everybody here has heard of a thousand times, but I had a client that, that was angry because over about a three month period, he wasn't making any money in a service. Now, not that every three month period is profitable, so don't get all excited about that. Sometimes we have, drawdowns and someone extended drawdowns either in velocity or i guess uh peak the trough whatever and over time but over time it, it tends to do okay knock on wood anyway long story endless i know too late he's like dave you got to look at my accounts i can't make any money with this trading service you got to tell me what i'm doing wrong and i'm like i, I really don't want to get into that you know it's all for hypothetical purposes only because no he insisted so all right i gave it a look and i knew the guy for 10 years or whatever 
And I said, okay, I got good news. You you really followed game plan really well. In fact, he followed game plan probably better than I did. And he made a few hundred dollars over this period. It was not a fantastic period. And again, not all three month periods so par- profitable. But when I looked at the spreadsheet, there was Continental Airlines, which I don't think exists anymore. And it was 20 or 20 something day trades. I forget how many, but it was, it was at least 20. And I pulled those out. And he had made three or four hundred dollars in a trading service. And again, nothing to brag about, but he lost over five thousand dollars on these day trades. And so when I called him up, I said, "Good news! I said you did you did a really good job following the plan. You actually made money following the service, but these day trades, you had a loss of over five thousand dollars. Without those day trades, you would have been profitable." And I expected a little bit of blowback, or really, oh, I didn't think about that, or wow, it's that much. And his answer really shocked me. He says, I know, I know. And it's like, oh, he knows. And and I've experienced that throughout my career on the educational side. Whenever I work with somebody kind of on a one-on-one basis, I'm like, how am I going to figure out what they're doing? And, and so I just ask, and then they tell me. <laughs> and those things are like, I'm over-trading. I'm trading for excitement slash recreation, not honoring my stop. Signal sharpshooting. Now, nothing in the grand poobah. But as I say, ad nauseum, I'm sick of myself hearing it, believe me. But as I say ad nauseum, it's like, uh, hey, why'd you quit the trading service? Well, I can't make any money with it. Okay, well, you know, we just had this this big winner, CPE. Uh, did you get that? No, I didn't get that. Did, well, are you an ARLP? We've been in that one a year and a half. No, I didn't take that one. And the list goes on and on. And some of the recent ones or whatever, in more recent times, maybe RES or some of these ones that hit the profit target recently. No, but I took those stinkers you recommended. So it's like, okay, well, that signal sharpshooting, and I borrowed that term sharpshooting from Greg Morris. And that could be like, let's say you're following a system on somewhat of a more mechanical basis, and you're picking and choosing what signals you want. Now, there's a fine line between signal sharpshooting and being a discretionary trader. But what I'm referring to here is a list of setups that I'm using as a model account and they're not being followed, okay? So that's something you really have to watch for. Now, we'll show you a couple of discretionary things. I'm gonna show you a discretionary thing with the TFM 10% system in a few minutes. And that's that's based on designer's intent. That's not a signal sharpshooting type of thing. And that'll make more sense in a few minutes. System surfing, holy grail hunting, and no specialization whatsoever i answered a post from somebody a while back kind of what was me post like how long does it take and it's like well it takes a long long time if you're going to day trade and trade e-minis and position trade and use technical classic technical analysis and all these other things now this is not to say you don't do those things eventually or in some way shape and form but Dave, I thought you day traded. Well, I do some day trading. I probably do more than I should. I know I preached for years against it. But I'm here and I see these intraday opportunities, which I'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes. And there's certain things that set up, not all the time and not, not often enough, but that can be money in the corner. But before you venture out into a day trade or day trading, or e-mini trading, which is a horrible, hard way to make money. If you're a successful e-mini trader, let me know what you're doing because it is tough. I, I had my biggest day ever in e-minis today, point-wise, not dollar-wise, because back in the day, I used to trade the big contract <laughs> and it was, uh, was it $500 a point back then or whatever? But I had a decent day, 80 something points. In fact, now that, I'm, now that I mention it, I have I have orders open. Hope oh, not doing so good in after hours yet. Well, hanging in there. Yeah, I'm nearing a stop on one. But anyway, but don't rush out and try to do all that at once. Do one little thing and get good at it, and then move on. Pick one pattern. And Linda Raskey once said, "All you need is one pattern to be successful." And she's right. Look uh, look for persistent pullbacks or just master the pullback in general. Um, IPOs might be a good place. I know we have a guy in a group that's done really well with IPOs. The one good thing about IPOs, as I sort of talked about quite a bit in the IPO course, was that they can self-regulate. So if the market starts getting crappy, 
what's going to happen? Well, people are going to say, let's hold off on bringing our company public because the stock market is going down. So they actually sort of do that timing for you. Now, you will occasionally, as you have seen recently with some of the IPOs I've recommended, you will occasionally find some even during questionable conditions that can work out nicely. But system surfing, again, holy grail hunting is, is, a, is a, a very bad thing. And sometimes you can end up chasing your tails for years. And the problem with that is you hit upon something you do really well. And then you had a drawdown and you start chasing that high. You keep trying to do that. Then you decide to do something else. And guess what? That thing you were doing actually starts working again, okay? So it could be tough. And you've got to be careful with, with the holy grail hunting. And one thing I've been writing about a little bit in my own notes, which I'll eventually share with you, is that there's a lot of dilemmas and paradoxes in trading. And one of them is when you stop searching for the holy grail, you will find it. And I know that seems a little nonsensical, but... It's true. It's like you stop searching and all of a sudden you find something, not exactly the holy grail, but you find something that's viable and conceptually correct that can work, not all the time, but over time. One thing I see a lot of, you lose four times in a row following a methodology to a T. You're doing great as far as following the plan. Unfortunately, just didn't work out. What in the cards, right? Then you watch the next four setups take off without you. And then what do you do? Then you take the next four crappy setups, rinse and repeat. In bidding trades, another one of the Dave Landry classic stories, Peter Murphy had me on or asked me to join this team with like a who's who of trading, Greg Morris and uh, just a ton of ton of people. I, I'd name them all. I try to name them, but I, there's no way I can name them all. But anyway, just, you know, kind of a pinch me type of moment in my career. Larry McMillan comes to mind. And, and again, I probably shouldn't try to name them all. And uh, Mothy, I told I called Mothy up after seeing how it was going to work. And basically, it was a forty thousand dollar newsletter a year. It was aimed at institutions, and it was kind of involved. But there were certain ways where the institutions might be able to get it for free or whatever. And and it seemed like a no brainer. And it looked like it was going to be a huge success. And I was very excited about this. But the way you got paid was you actually had to recommend something. You didn't get paid to sit on a board or anything like that. So if you put in a trade, you would get paid based on that trade, based on the number of subscribers, et cetera. Anyway, I called up Peter because I was a little nervous after about a week of being on this newsletter thing. And I said, Peter, I don't know if I don't know if I'm your, I'm your guy. And he's like, well, what's the matter, Dave? And I said, I said, well, the way I trade with my methodology and what I'm going to be recommended for for you guys with the with the momentum and the pullbacks and the way it works and and I know you're going to need fairly liquid stocks and all these other things is I might go a while without a setup and I know you guys are looking for setups so I, I might just be sitting on my hands and and I, I won't have anything to contribute and he's what he said next was just kind of shocked me he goes Dave you're exactly the guy we want for this project do not invent trades. And it kind of was like, wow, that's great. You know, it made me feel really good. And Vinny trades. And, and believe me, I'm guilty of a lot of this behavior, but I'm constantly working and working and working to get better. And, and people ask me, well, what's something easy I could do to get better? It's like, well, wake up early every morning. And as I preach, write three handwritten pages. And that's when you're forced to face the Einstein's definition of insanity, you know, doing the same thing over and over again. And expecting a different outcome. And, and believe me, if every day you're writing, I'm um, lost another thousand day trading, lost another thousand. Like, it's like after a while, it's like, you know, maybe stop doing that. It's kind of like beating your head against the wall. It feels so good and quit. So that will help you to see what you're doing wrong and kind of face that Einstein's definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting. A different outcome. The other thing, micromanagement is a big one. I know I can go on and on too late, right? But micromanagement, macro, micromanagement is a huge one, and it's it's kind of fun to see these things play out in Facebook. And the good thing about Facebook is I'm seeing a lot of these things play out in a good way. I'm still seeing the mistakes being made, and I'm making a few myself, believe me. But I am seeing people do more and more things, like put on a little discretion, just a little bit, as I'll show you in one second, to stick with the position. 
and no longer micromanaging. And I, I think seeing other people, not just me, but other people being successful and following the methodology helps you to kind of believe that it can work. But micromanagement, huge, 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 huge problem. Now, I'm often asked, well, Dave, isn't discretion micromanagement? Not exactly. And I don't have my definitions in front of me, but I had a really good definition. But if memory serves, that sets up along the lines of micromanagement is, is sort of like trying to beat the system instead of following it. And that's when you you get into a position and you lose money for three days in a row and you're like, F this, and you get out. And then the next day, of course, it's, I almost said limit up, but not limit, well, it's it's halted, okay? It goes up 20 points and it's halted, does 100% overnight. And time and time and time again, I see people send me emails like, gosh, darn it, golly, geez. <laughs> it's something a little worse, obviously. I micromanage myself out of that big winner. Now, they don't all turn into big winners. If they did, you'd never see my fat ass again, right? I'd be sitting on my, my uh, I've been sitting on uh, a, a private jet. You, you ever notice those jets never take off? You know, <laughs> they never show a jet land and the guys come walking down and go like, I do all the secrets of trading. I'm the best trader in the world. <laughs> of course, now they can be like, I know all the secrets of trading. I'm the best trader in the world. Hey, stop that. Hey, hey, stop that. <laughs> but I digress. I'd never be shot on Friday, but these guys, you know, they, they built people out of $127 million. Turns out the whole thing was a scam. God bless them. <laughs> anyway, a little scratching goes a long ways. If you, let's say uh, you get a little stop, stop nick, like it, it just barely kind of touches your stop. It immediately has a huge reversal. Stick with the trade. If it gets close to the, the IPT, but doesn't quite get there. And that's the thing I've been talking a lot about lately is we had stock after stock after stock get to the IPT or just shy of the IPT and then reverse. And then on some of those, they ultimately hit it, but on some of them, they did not. So SGHC was one of those recently. I think I showed this one last week. And you can see it came really, really close to the IPT. In a case like that, I will take the profits because it's a gift horse, especially just two days or less than 24 hours in a trade, like I said last week. So there's a trade down there. And without going into a lot of details, that in two days, it's a gift horse of 984 bucks. So I'll take it. Okay. And the reason I'm just re showing this is I do, when I'm thinking about taking that IPT a little earlier, it's getting close. Not all the time, but I try to make a conscious effort to announce it first before I actually exit the trade. So it does look like I'm getting out ahead of time. Now, this is how, this is what I wanted to show you. Notice that this trade here tracked mechanically. This one did come back in. Okay. So this one came back in and stopped out at a loss, followed mechanically. Now, if you're newer to the trading service and newer to trading then by all means follow everything mechanically i think i'd be more impressed with you if you followed everything mechanically okay and took a loss of this trade then if you kind of i would kind of see it maybe getting lucky and actually making a gain on this trade so with a little discretion winner or loser i was able to it's somewhere in here it must have gotten, uh, it must be this blob back here. <laughs> I was able to pull a little bit of money out of this trade, even though it turned into a loss. Not that I'm going to buy anything, but when it takes off overnight and you're getting really, really close to that IPT, it's okay to lock and load. Now, the other thing too, getting back to like the following something mechanically, I think it's, again, it's good if you're new to trading or newer to the service, whatever the case may be, but new in general. But the, in the case of like the turtles, it, it kind of reminds me of when Eckerd and Dennis questioned one of the guys because everybody got clocked in Coco and this one guy didn't take the Coco trade and he actually didn't lose money. Well, they actually interviewed him and they didn't interview the other guys. He got called to the office like, why did you not take the trade? And he had a pretty good, he had a pretty good reason. He had, he figured out that 
if he goes three pages into his analysis and he can't there's there's no setups at the three pages of of notes then he doesn't take any setups he figured that or he's looked at his notes in very he was very careful to look at his notes and realize that hey seems like i only have a lot of losers or anything after three pages results in a loss and I don't know if they fully bought what he was saying, but the guy, I think they liked the way he was thinking that he had a a methodology in place for why he didn't take that trade. And I think he was able to show him other trades he did or not, did not take based on that. CENX was another one, very frustrating. Now, I actually, I don't know why I lost money on this one, but I did. So I don't want to make it look like I always make money on these things, but this thing came fairly close to that IPT. It got there over a couple of days and I did not take it. I thought I did, but for some reason, I, I did unload some, but for some reason what I unloaded, I didn't get a really good price on. So I'll have to do the forensics on that, but I don't want to make it look like I always trade in the perfect manner, because believe me, I don't. But this is another one of those near misses that we've been talking about a lot lately. If you can't sleep at night, Go in and watch last week's show. Now, shifting gears real quick. Any questions or anything so far before we go any further? So George says, slap me, Dave. <laughs> George, this is not this 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 is not that kind of show. <laughs> uh, I used to joke and say, uh, well, I shouldn't say it. But yeah, George, I mean, you you got the smarts. I know you know what you're doing. I've seen you execute the trades okay you just need to focus a little bit on one thing and do that one thing long enough and not try to do everything and believe me we're all guilty of that and and it amazes me even after you've been at this for a long time you do still try to do maybe too much okay anyway speaking of doing too much <laughs> One thing I've been thinking about lately, and I finally sat down and actually coded it, and I put the code in the Facebook group for those who are interested. And my wondering is, if I only somehow traded on route days, by a route day, I mean a day that just goes straight one way. And... I've done a lot of presentations where I talk, I call those a holy grail day in some cases. And it seems like I can't help but make money. I got absolutely creamed on my position trading today. But on my intraday trading, I made up for some of those losses because looking at the spiders, obviously we just imploded today. We had a little fake out around the open, looked like it was going to be a gap and go. And that put the hook in and the market imploded. So I'm wondering if I only traded on those route days and it's sort of like the Holy Grail hunting, the Holy Grail day hunting, Holy Grail day starts at one end or close to one end and ends at the other and it's a wide range bar, something like this. Something like today, even though we had a little fake out higher, which is which actually made this work really well. But what I have here is I take the high minus the low I'm sorry, the high plus the low to give me the average middle price and that updates during the day. So just kind of eyeballing this, that'd probably be like 445. And then I look at what percentage of today's range, the high minus low, not the average true range, okay? Or the average range, whatever they call that, the true range, but just the high minus low. Because you can't trade the gap. You know, if it gaps up here, that, that doesn't count as range if you're trying to catch your, capture an intraday trade. Now, I just told you, don't, don't day trade, don't do all these things, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Do all those things, but do them serially, okay? Become successful over here, doing your position trading first, and then venture into a little day trading, into some ETFs, and then after you get a little better with that, then maybe a do a little E-mini trading, but again, trade lightly there. Or better yet, maybe trade like the Russian dolls we talk about, or an ogre type of pattern we've got one on the service tonight kind of made a nice big tko could make a nice little ogre tomorrow so we're going to watch that one those opening gap reversals can be really good if 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 you're super patient and 
I might go weeks without an opening gap reverse. I'm looking at my gap list from this morning and it just, nothing was there. Nothing was worthwhile. And FYI, I'm using Finviz for that, for that thing. I use a lot of different stuff and I could probably consolidate, but I, I you know, start working with some people and I start using their software and someone else. And then crypto is a different software. So I, I use a lot of tools, but I'm totally okay with that. I think that's, a little bit of my father, a little bit of my father and me. My father was like, uh, my father was high school educated, and he really wanted to be college educated. And he took a lot of, he took a lot of computer courses and stuff, and and he just really believed in education, and, and he wanted to make sure all his kids got educated. And it was, ne it was never a problem for him to spend money on education, and so that's kind of where I am. If if it's a tool that can make my job easier and help me out, I'm all in. Anyway, so as far as the route days taken to extreme, I wondered what happened on days where the range exceeded the 10-day average true range. I take 50% of the average true range and add it to the middle, and then I take 50% of the average true range and subtract it from the middle, okay? So these little brackets will move a little bit intraday. And I'm not necessarily using them as a signal in and of themselves. I just want to see where the range is relative to the average true range based on today's action, okay? So forget about these two indicators up here. I actually deleted them. That's like uh, just some range measurements that I was using, and now I just use this one at the bottom. So today's range in the spiders was 151% of the 10-day average. This gives me a little bit of a reference. So if you've got a little tight bar, and these, the high range and the low range percentage-wise, okay, or way far away and you got this little tiny bar in between okay like this day here and that's what the 15th or 16th i need to go back and see if i made any money on this day i'd be willing to bet you that i lost my ass on this day okay because i was chasing these choppy markets and, and maybe if i looked at this little illustrator here indicator whatever you want to call it, it's not an indicator it just tells you where we are within that range okay then I would see that, well, hang on a minute, Dave, this thing really hasn't gone anywhere. Maybe I should go ride my bike or take my wife to lunch or go to the gym or whatever, as opposed to sitting here staring at a screen. I'll work on a presentation or remember to promote the weekend charts or something like that. Is that a broadening pattern? Uh, I don't know what you mean, like a broadening formation? No, I, I don't. I, I don't use a broadening formation. So, I mean, it might be, but I don't. That's something that I don't trade. So, forget about that. TLS gap up and gap down scans work pretty good within one day. All right, Jeff, could you could you put a couple of those up in the group? That'd be great. I'd like to use that. You see, maybe I don't need the finviz if I had that. But yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I don't know. I'm kind of a fan of the finviz. I'm a fan of a lot of things. <laughs> but anyway, does this? Hopefully this makes sense to you. So this is the average true range. And you can see down here, like I said, it's 151%. So if it's touched the bottom and the top, okay, like it did right here on this day here. So that was at least 100% plus a little bit of the 10 day average true range. And again, on a day like this, probably got chewed up, okay? On a day like this, I probably got chewed up. Day like this, probably got chewed up, but it's in the middle, in the middle of those bars, okay? Kind of like a little island, so to speak, in between those two bars. Finviz is live on the open, from what I could tell, if you have a paid account, okay? And at the worst, maybe it's bats or something or whatever, but I think. If you have a paid account, it should be because it shows you the gaps on the open. Now, I don't use it as a live charting service, but it shows you what's gapping down before they open. So even if that was a little delayed, it wouldn't matter. Okay, so it looks like paid is more live or live. The question is, what ATR, 10-day ATR? 
okay? So I'm looking at the high minus the low because you can't you can't be in before the gap, right? So I'm looking at the high minus the low and I'm comparing that to a 10 day AP, a, ATR, average true range, and that's gonna give me what percentage of today's intraday range are we within that 10 day window? And what I'm searching for is that wide range bar and some place to get on. The problem with some some of this type of research is like, oh, well, look, it's 100 percent. Wow, you could have made all this money, but what about it didn't become 100 percent? So one thing, it did become 100 percent automatically. It might have taken all day to become 100 percent. Okay. So what I'm initially thinking is, what would happen? Not that I could do this, but what would happen if you waited until you were nearly 100 percent? Now I've talked, I've done presentations. If you go to the trading quick clips, I did have a few of those where I talked about the the holy grail day hunting, okay? And some of the things that, that some of the research I was experimenting with to try to get me to a day like this or a day like this where you have a wide range bar starts at one end and ends at the other. And one of the things that I have incorporated into the intraday stuff I do is like, for instance, SOXS, okay? Unless it's an opening gap reversal or something, I will try to not get into something like SOXS unless it's closing in on 50% of its 10-day average true range. And that can help keep me out of trouble, especially if it does a bunch of fake outs before. Or, or one problem you can have is you can't is you not see the forest for the trees. So you come in and all of a sudden you see a bar that big in the first 15 minutes. And you're like ready to pounce all over that. But if you look at a daily chart and you see that it's a little tiny, I hate to use the word candle, <laughs> in between these two bars, and like right here, let's say it's 30% or 20% doing today, it's like, okay, that looks this big. But when you see the forest for the trees, that's just noise. And if you can watch that noise kind of fake out, maybe make a new high and then make, make a new low with some vigor and then come back and take out that high or something. Then you can go after it. So this is just, uh, I'm just scratching the surface here. Anyway, hopefully that made sense and go, uh, didn't seem too far out of the blue. All right, let's talk about crypto. Not a whole lot to say about crypto, but one thing that's kind of interesting is it's been in a bear market for quite a while, but things change really, really quickly. And I like this tweet from Musk, cryptocurrencies. And I was trying to explain this to one of you guys earlier today. One hour here is seven years on Earth, okay? <laughs> so that's kind of the cryptocurrencies. And if you think about it, and I did the math a while back, I forget, but it's they're open five times more than stocks because they're open every day, every day, every day, every day, right? 24-7. So stocks are open how long? Technically, there's some after-hour trading, but... It's, it's not that thick, right? So stocks technically are only open six and a half hours a day. Cryptocurrencies, 24 hours a day, plus weekends, plus holidays, like I said, last week or whenever. My best day that I can remember in crypto was Thanksgiving Day last year, where I hit, I'm probably going to exaggerate. No, it was seven. I hit seven initial profit targets in one day. Well, those days are gone for now, at least. Anyway, this client was asking me, well, how can you make any money in crypto now? It all looks like crap. All the shit coins look like shit. S-H-Y-T. Anyway, I said, well, you know, you got to pick your spots carefully. Now, I did catch one that went up 40%, but right before we went live, I noticed it's already come back in. Well, that's just life. I've taken my partial profits, got my stop at break even plus, and should do okay. It's kind of funny. Speaking of Elon Musk, I saw this. I thought it was funny. I would like to speak to the manager of Twitter. I own 9.2% of it. <laughs> Buddy of mine had never heard of the Karen memes. And he said, uh, my wife, Karen, I'm like, Karen like the memes or like Karen like, her name is Karen. He's like, her name is Karen. What do you, what do you mean? And I'm like, okay, never mind. So let, let me just show you a couple of things in ACP before we jump straight to crypto. So if you take a look at, here's the intraday charts, and let's see if we can get like a maybe two days in here. So today was 
a route day. And one of the things I, I know today, I'm, I know I'm sounding a lot like last week at Bandcamp, but pretty excited about the group. You guys were super active today and it was fun chatting with you guys. But one thing that was interesting when I put my post out, and I'll have to look at what time that post went out, but one of the things that was shocking to me was that the S&P at that point, Bases of Spiders, had not made a two bar high. This is an effing dream. And I know I'm gonna jinx myself, but I was looking at one of my stops on the original position that I put on in the futures. And if I get stopped out, I'll get 80 points, okay? And today's the day, now with the position trading, believe me, we got clocked, okay? But today's the day that you would you would live for for the intraday trading. But my point was like, okay, this is a two bar high here. Never got taken out. Okay, here's your next one. Here, here. Let's just go through this real quick. Would be there. Look at that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, this, it didn't take out a two bar high until late in the day. And then let's see what happened. Okay, so it did take out a couple later in the day. But if you were to draw a trend line above these highs, it would not have much intersection. And the other thing, which is pretty amazing, just seeing this now, and this might be fodder for research, you know, maybe you guys can take the ball and run with it. And, and, and please let me know what you find. But look at this. If you draw a line through these bars, look at the persistency. That is unbelievable. Mathematically, that's equivalent of linear regress regression but i like to just draw draw a line through the bars look at that that's amazing i feel like tiny o look at it look at that tree and it's huge nice little opening gap reversal i did take a stab at it when it looked like it was reversing very early on very small position got stopped out and the second time was a charm on that one Take a look at JDAS until late in the day. I did stop out on this one late in the day, but I was able to get partial profits. It's a nice little gap and go, gaps higher, and then just keeps on keeping on. Now, I didn't buy it here or here, but once the day I got in at 711, so I got in way up here, which is a little scary. This is a 15 minute chart, okay? And George, you, you do not need to be trading 15 minute charts. <laughs> That's a problem. I get you guys all excited about this stuff, and, and some of it, you, get work on your daily trading first work on your position trading then move into this but anyway uh i forget what the percentage was here i'll write i've I got it written down and what i do is i write down the percentages when i'm looking at something and getting excited about something and i'll see like if it's 18 percent or 20 percent or something like that and there's not a whole lot of gap then I might, I would likely hold off on the trade. So let me just see if I could figure out when that triggered in. Talk amongst yourselves. Probably filled around, filled early in the morning. Anyway, I could backtrack on this maybe next week or whenever. I'll circle back to that. I'll circle back to that. <laughs> yes. Somebody, somebody has has uh, recorded every time that uh, what's her name? I can't say it. Pansky has said. Uh, I'll circle back to that. Anyway, so I'll find out. But I guarantee it was close to fifty percent, and I might have factored in that gap a little bit, so it's a gap and go. So, not to talk on both sides of my mouth, but if you have an opening gap reversal like we had in the peas, then I'm not so worried about it going fifty percent before I get in. Okay. And then semiconductors, nice little gap down, okay? And then nice little reversal here. And you can see nice persistent trend higher on that one. And then, you know, the two bar, two bar high, two bar low thing, two bar low, let's see. You didn't get a two bar low in this until right there. Or no, right here, okay? Now, this doesn't always happen, but how freaking great would this be if you had days like this and just traded a two bar low okay 
Yeah, don't run out and try that, George. Two bar lows. <laughs> it, 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 believe me, I, I was worse than you ever will be as far as trying everything in the world and hearing something and the next day go out and trade two bar lows or whatever. But it is kind of amazing when you have these route type of days where it just goes in one direction and doesn't look back. Okay, let's take a look. I want to show you something real quick. And this is not sharpshooting, okay? But if you look, if you squint your eyes, and it's really hard to see. You, can, you can't even see it right now, okay? This is the TFM 10% system. If you squint your eyes right here, this low is greater than the 50 week moving average. The system is very simple, okay? You need two weeks above the 50 week moving average, and it has to be above the buy line. The buy line is simply 90% of the 50 week closing high. So 90% of this or this less 10%, depends on how you want to look at it, is the buy line, okay? Let's go back to two years. But oh, anyway, you squint your eyes. Technically, that is Landry Light. But my intent was to buy on strength and not weakness, okay? Now, if this would have been a bunch of Landry Light up here, then, then yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a bona fide signal. Mechanically, I did track it as a signal. But with my own stuff that I've been experimenting with, I did not actually use it as a signal let's just go back a couple of years just real quick one thing with this type of system and it could do some pretty amazing things like i love the way i got you out right before the pandemic really hit hard okay and the sell signal and there's plenty of videos on my youtube channel again youtube slash c slash dave Leonard. But a close below the 50 week moving average and a close below the buy line, you need to get out. And what amazes me, it, it was just one week off of highs and then you got a sell signal. And that's pretty rare. That rarely happens where a market drops that fast from new highs. And I have to say that the velocity of the slide during the pandemic really scared the bejesus out of me. I expected us. For a while, I thought we were going to be down 80%. It just sure felt like that, okay, in the middle of it. Anyway, oh, by the way, Liquid, De Liquid Death, if you're watching, love your water. Thank you very much. Trying to get that sponsorship working. <laughs> One thing about this signal, and as I've said a thousand times, if you look at the magnitude of how far it dropped, I consider this a successful sell signal. Sell signal, we don't short, we just get out the way. As far as the system is concerned, we do short individual stocks. But the point I want to make is, notice that you got back in somewhere in here. So it, this could be considered a whipsaw filter, but the system did, as designed, got you out of the market before it got in a lot of trouble. And the reason it ended up being a whipsaw and got you in so high was that it it didn't have time to catch up because it made such a V-shaped recovery. But if you go back to like 2009, as I've said quite a bit, I don't know if we have time to get there tonight, but you could see that the line did start dropping, the buy line that is, and so it would have gotten you in at much, 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 much lower levels. Now, the thing is, this is not the only system type of thing I follow. We look at bow ties, we look at first thrusts, we look at daily charts, and so on and so forth, okay? But unless, if a market makes a V-shaped recovery, it will be a, a bit of a whipsaw signal. You can see this one looks a little bit better. When was this slide? This slide was back in, what year is this? Anyway, the spreadsheet's out there on YouTube, so you can check it out. But you can see in this particular case, the line did start dropping, and it got you in a lot sooner than that whipsaw filter. But anyway, TFM 10% system, technically, yes, it was a buy, but... I wasn't buying it. And I like what, uh, was it John Ross or John Z? I think it was John Z said, you go first, <laughs> which was funny. All right, so that's the TFM. Let's let's uh, shift gears real quick, go into crypto. And I was so damn busy today, I didn't even get a chance to see what I'm still long, what I haven't gotten stopped out of. The stuff in pink, I should be long. So KLV, I'm long that one. 
And what I liked here was it had nice Landry light going higher, lows greater than the moving average, pulls back to the moving average, and then it began to take off again, not making a lot of money on that one. I'm low on Kate, but I could see it's tailed off. I don't know where my IPT is on that one. I like the way it was rallying off the moving average. XCN, I probably have gotten stopped out of this one. I was long from 98 or 0.09, I should say, 0.098. So I'll have to check that one to see if I need a bailout on that one. This one, I might be long, I don't remember, but this was more of a pig of the poke. And then the ape was going straight up. I got on it, got my initial profit target out, and I'm probably stopped out of the rest. And that kind of, this is sort of like a day in the life of crypto. There was one I was long, which one was it? Was it ape? One of them went up 40% yesterday or day before, and I was explaining that to a client. And you've got to have your IPT in place when that happens. Otherwise, you're not going to get that spike higher. Okay. And that's one thing I've learned with crypto. I mean, I believe it in stocks sometimes, but stocks, you have a little bit more time to react. In crypto, especially with them going 24 7, go ahead and put that limit order in and close your eyes and forget about it. There's Ethereum, we're back below 30 EMA. As I say ad nauseum, if you didn't know anything about crypto, I was trying, a buddy of mine was visiting a couple days ago and I tried to show him, you know, he's, oh, I'm long this one, I'm long that one. I'm like, okay, they're going straight down. I hear you and you did a little research and I know the metaverse is gonna be the, the future and, and yeah, I hope it is too, but don't buy anything unless it's above, the 30 EMA. If you didn't know anything about crypto, that in and of itself will keep you out of a lot of trouble, as I preach week in and way It might have been this one, GMT. I know it was long this one, it got knocked out, and then it took off without me. I mean, that's crypto, okay? I don't want to make it seem any easier than it is, because it's not. But when you get into a rip-roaring bull market, which we haven't been in in a long, long time, it can be pretty cool and pretty, pretty fun and easy to trade. So super busy today. I missed a lot of these things that took off, but you can see some of these things have taken off in here. And a lot of them, again, are underneath the 30 EMA. Any uh, pairs you guys want me to look at real quick before we shift gears and go back to, uh, that was kind of interesting. It might be a little thin. Oh, that's versus Bitcoin, so. Anybody know why they don't have USDT or USD, I guess on, KuCoin, it's USDT instead of USD, which is kind of scary, by the way. USDT does have some issues. It kind of scares the heck out of me. My goal was to make as much money as possible when forced to trade with the USDT and siphon off some of those funds and put them somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere more legit, I guess. That's the thing about crypto, though. I had to pay a shit ton of taxes, but then you know, that evaporates pretty quick. It, it, it could be a tough market to trade, so. But it's fun when it works, believe me. Okay, nobody, uh, no crypto picks? I know it's my fault for not getting the show out. <laughs> I do that every week. I need to get somebody to promote it for me. Okay, let's jump into stocks then. And there's a few things I obviously want to show you with the overall market. And it's basically a lot of things that I've been talking about lately, just how they're playing out. So. Go ahead and start typing in uh, any symbols you want me to take a look at. How do you switch from stocks to coins and trading view? I don't know. I actually have some things mixed in in here. Like I've got E-minis mixed in. Uh, I'm going to actually switch over to Telechart for stocks. But somewhere in here, just so if I pull this up on my phone, I'm looking at cryptocurrencies, I'll pull up E-minis or whatever. So you could add stocks and e-minis in here, or if you wanted to, just of course make a new list and put some stocks in there if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, let's uh, let me just shift gears here. So I don't know if that answered your question, but and and you know in that for the for the the trading view, okay, what I do is because KuCoin has the most coins, and I do have a KuCoin account. I will load all of the pairs 
from KuCoin, okay? So I, I, you type in a letter, you, you hit the plus to add one, type in the letter A, and then make sure all your A's are added, then B's and C's. And if you don't have enough time to do that, just keep an eye for the new listings there. And also keep an eye out on crypto.com. There's a little ticker that shows you the hot ones and keep an eye on that. Throw it up in a browser in one of your screens and take a look at it every now and then. All right, let's take a look at the piece. My big concern, as I've been saying at nauseam, was that we'd rally just enough to get everybody feeling good. And as I've been saying quite a bit lately, market tanked. We got a TFM 10% sell system. I told a buddy of mine and I said, you might want to talk to your guy. He's like, I did. And I'm like, okay, what did he say? And he said, well, he's getting more aggressive. And that was somewhere up in here whenever the TFM 10% system triggered. And his guy was catching that fall of ninth. And, you know, I'm pretty, I, I'm not a good poker player. You know, it lets up drinking a little maybe, but because <laughs> I tend to, I wear my feelings on my sleeve. I, I don't, I don't hold back a lot. I get in a lot of trouble with my wife. I tend to roll my eyes a lot, you know, so I probably what rolled my eyes, made the universal sign for, you know, what, and <laughs> something like that without even realizing it. I gotta watch that I don't do that so much. <laughs> um, boy, I, was, well, I have to edit that out. <laughs> I didn't sound right. Anyway, he's like, well, my guys made me a lot of money. I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't want to get in a fight with you, you know? I could take him, but uh, that's another story. Anyway, yeah, too much testosterone, huh, Dave? Anyway, when the market rallied back up, he was feeling pretty good. Another one of my friends is like, hey, my portfolio is coming back nicely. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's great. But, you know, be careful. And that man on the street sort of helps me connect to what's actually happening, happening in the market. Like one of my clients texted me today, what's going on? And I'm like, I think the scenario I've been worried about is playing out. The market has rallied just enough to suck everybody in, make everybody feel great, and then it's kind of going to spit them out. And I'm going to quote Rasky, who's quoting somebody else. She said she got off the floor probably. But the market will do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. And one example she used is if it looks like it's rolling over, it's going to have a big rally first, make everybody feel good, and then roll over. And that's all technical analysis. It's like the hokey pokey. That's what it's all about, right? Is reading the psychology of the market's participants. And of course, you have to embrace your own and do what has to be done. I don't know why I'm talking like Jackie Basin. But you can see it rallied up just enough to make everybody feel good. In fact, we were 3.5% away, 3.52% to be precise, from all-time highs in the cash S&Ps. Now, this is not the end of the world. We're, we're barely where we were a few days ago, okay? Early last, late last week or whatever, no big deal. But you, it's gotta stop somewhere and it's not, a route right back up and things are torn down faster than they are built. Obviously they slide faster than they glide. If you're a pilot, don't correct me on that. Just assume that a glide just, <laughs> a glide goes up. Now take a look at the NASDAQ. This is what I've been really worried about, that we get a big fat rally up, just enough to make everybody feel good. And then the market rolls right back over. So this is a pretty serious slide. Let's measure that for SNGs if I can. Let's see, how do you do that? So that slide there is 10, wow, that's 10% in and of itself. Yeah, it's kind of witch hat looking, I hear you. So the witch hat, you have a thrust and then you have like two little peaks, kind of like a, a witch's hat. So do this and then this, and then let's see if I can do it right. Something like that. Okay, a witch hat looks something like this. So yeah, I kind of hear you. And you know, I'm just kind of looking at the chart. A witch hat is kind of a failed head and shoulders, I guess, if you think about it. A witch hat is a short only pattern. But yeah, it does kind of look like a witch hat. Let's see if we get a, a weekly chart. It might be a little bit more obvious. Yeah, good eye on that. Let's, anybody know how to clean all these things up in the new, the new TC? It's been around for <laughs> 20 years, huh? Yeah, that's got a little witch hat look to it. So it's got that V in here. That's classic Dave Landry. Thanks for remembering that. Wow. And that's George. You just you're fairly new to my stuff. I'm I'm impressed. But yeah, that's kind of a witch hat. So that's kind of a sharp sell off, sharp retrace. It hits the pivot point and then dies out. So on a weekly basis for sure. Good eye on that, George. Congratulations. 
Let's take a look at the Rusty. Rusty's been bottoming out here forever. Unfortunately, if it takes out these lows, as I've been saying quite a bit, there's a Jeffrey Mason. It looks like it's got a ways to go. And on the outside, it's got a mountain of overhead supply to deal with, okay? So the Rusty's got some problems, but it's been trying to just base out in here for a while. So we just have to wait and see what's gonna happen there. Energy's had a bit of a knockout move today. They have been kind of drifting higher, which had me a little concerned. I kind of like them now that they have, uh, thank you, John, I, thank you, okay. I like them now that they begin to knock out a little bit, correct a little bit. Uh, just make sure you wait for entries there. Same thing with metals and mining. Metals and mining actually has a bit of a, a double top knockout. If you look at a two day chart, you can see it a little bit better. Double top knockout is when you make a minor double top and ideally this peak is a little higher than the prior one. Gets everybody feeling pretty good, sucks them in. And then the TKO spits them out. So that's a good little pattern right there. If, and only if we take out this high, okay? That's one thing I love about the TKO is that, especially if you've got a wide range bar down, if it doesn't trigger, don't take the trade, no trigger, no trade, okay? A lot of areas still weak in here. Durables, as you can see, longer term downtrend. Drugs actually look pretty good. They've pulled back in here a little bit as of late. We could see some setups here fairly soon. Biotech though, within the drugs, not so much, okay? They're a little wide and loose and all over the place, but if they do take out the recent lows, they'll probably have a ways to go before they find some support, but they are pretty choppy. In here, I mean, other than intraday bases, like today was a good day for that. Health services all over the place. You see they crawled up to toward these old highs, but then they were thwarted today. Semiconductors, an area I love to watch to tell me the health of the overall market. Not doing so hot, okay? So we're down here, and as I would say, quite a bit. If we take out these lows, I would be concerned. And semiconductors is kind of indicative of what I've been saying. You've got a big old fat rally, maybe kind of witch hatty towards a prior peak in here, right below all this overhead supply, and then it doesn't follow through and the market implodes, okay? So that hopefully will not play out in the S&P 500. Hopefully is not a harbinger to what might happen in the S&P 500, but looking a little questionable. Bond's been in a pretty serious downtrend, as you can see. Got a little bit of, well, not no, not really, actually down today. A little bit of bounce yesterday. But they actually sold off a little bit today, which is a little concerning because you don't want to see the overall market go down and bonds go down and gold go down. And JDS worked out pretty good today. Gold was down a little bit, but the gold stocks got whacked pretty hard. Okay, speaking of gold stocks, John wants to look at NIM. NIM looks okay. I was looking at it earlier. It, it pulled back into its prior little breakout area, but you know, it's a gold stock, okay? So maybe give it a little bit of a pass. But I would say, I would say it's a it's a a strong okay. <laughs> and you could you could probably do a textbook TKO here, 82. I'm glad you brought this one up because I'm able to illustrate what I want to talk about with one of the stocks that's in the Landry list tonight without actually having to show that one. But NIM, I think I almost made it to the Landry list. And if not, if it's not in there, I may have pulled it out the last minute just because I didn't like the way it pulled back to the prior little peak in here. But hey, you know, metals and mining stocks, especially gold, sometimes you have to be a little bit more lenient and not look for as much perfection. But yeah, if you're going to play this one, I'd say 82 would be a good entry on that and maybe down around 75 would be a good stop but i'll tell you an even better play and i need to write it down for tomorrow and remember it and john if it gaps lower i'm gonna task you with with letting me know on facebook but if it gaps lower a few points lower maybe three or four points lower i'm gonna look to play the opening gap reversal on that that might be the play and also on that one that's on the landry list that i talked about earlier i think that'd be pretty good yeah, Jeff, thanks for all your help with the coding. I appreciate that. All right, any more before we wrap it up? 
But while we're, while we're at an impasse, I obviously want to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. Thanks for finding the show. I know I make it impossible to find, but if you never can find it, if you can't find it for some reason, davelander.com slash webinar. All right, going once, going twice. As usual, thank you guys and girls for attending tonight. Everybody have a great Friday and round out your week. Hopefully everything will go well and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.